If you're just tuning in, we're going over all of the new cards in Innistrad Midnight Hunt because we finally got a look at the entire list ahead of next week's pre-release. And then two weeks from now, the actual set is coming out. So we're doing each color, and then we're going to do multicolored, and then we're probably going to do commanders. Um, so we are on to green now. Uh, so the first green card in Innistrad Midnight Hunt is Augur of Autumn. For one and two greens, you get a 2-3 human druid. Pardon me. Uh, when this human druid is in the battlefield, you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play lands from the top of your library, and it has Coven. As long as you control three or more creatures with different powers, you may cast creature spells from the top of your library as well. So this is a very, very powerful green card. Uh, this is a very, very powerful green card that's going to go in every green deck, I'm sure, because it gives you access to the top of your library. Um, as far as lands go, and even more, um, you can play creatures if you've got uh, the Coven ability unlocked. The next green card is Bounding Wolf for two and a green. There's a little jumpy boy trying to eat that bat. He's a 3-2 wolf creature with flash and reach, so he can jump in the air and attack those, or block, he can block those uh, flying creatures. Um, pretty, pretty good card. For three mana, you get a three power um, creature with reach. Um... The next green card is Bramble Armor for one and a green. It's an artifact equipment. When Bramble Armor enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control. So you get one free equip. Um, equip creature gets plus two, plus one. And then after your one free equip, equip uh, cost is four on Bramble Armor. This is a pretty, pretty great little piece of armor. Plus two, plus one on Enchanted Creature. The next green card is Briar Bridge Tracker. For two and a green, you get a 2-3 human scout with vigilance. When Briar Bridge Tracker enters the battlefield, investigate. So you create a clue token that you can pay two mana and sacrifice to draw a card. Um, as long as you control a token, Briar Bridge Tracker gets plus two, plus zero. So as long as your battlefield has at least one token creature on it or a token artifact like your Investigate, uh, your Clue token, uh, Briarbridge Tracker gets plus two. So it becomes a 4-3. Well, it's very, very cool. Little tiny buff for a Briarbridge Tracker for a three-mana green creature. I like it. The next green card is Brood. 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 Brood Weaver. For three and a green, you get a 2-4 spider with reach. When Brood Weaver dies, create a 1-2 green spider creature token with reach. So you get a 2-4, and then when it dies, you get a 1-2. And they're both pretty much the same thing, except for one of them's a token. It's a pretty handy green creature card. The next green card is one we went over last week, Candlelit Cavalry. Cavalry. For four and a green, you get a 5-5 five, five human knight creature with a coven ability. Coven ability is, at the beginning of your combat on your turn, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, Candlelit Cavalry gains trample until end of turn. So as long as you have a coven, your 5-5 five, five human creature gets uh, trample. This would be really powerful, especially because it's human, if you're playing a white-green deck, because there's lots of white cards that buff human creatures, and this one will get uh, trample and a buff. <coughs> oh my god, pardon me. That was so abrupt. The next card is Clear Shot. For two and a green, instant... Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So this is the um, instant fight card of the set for green, which always gets an instant fight card. 
The next green creature or the next green card is Consuming Blob for three, a green green. You get a mythic. Um, it is blank and then blank plus one. Consuming Blob's power is equal to the number of card types amongst cards in your graveyard and its toughness is equal to that number plus one. At the beginning of your end step, create a green ooze creature token with this creature's power is equal to the number of card types amongst cards in your graveyard and toughness. So this guy just replicates over and over again. Every time you go to your end step, you create another ooze. Um, this is pretty, is pretty powerful. We've seen a lot of green creature cards that uh, replicate. Uh, and this is three in the green green for a ooze creature that makes more ooze creatures um, whose power and toughness is equal to that of the number of ca different card types amongst cards in your graveyard. Going to be a lot of decks designed around the consuming blob. The next green card is Contortionist Troop, another card we went over. X and a green it gives you a zero zero human. Portion is troop enters the battlefield with X one one counters on it, so you can make it as powerful as you want, depending on how much mana you spend when you cast it. Um, it also has a coven ability at the beginning of your end step. If you control three or more creatures with different powers, put a one one counter on target creature you control. You can put it on the contortionist troop, or you can put it on something else. The next green card is Dawn Heart Mentor. For two and a green, you get a 0-4 Human Warlock. When Dawn Heart Mentor enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one White Human Creature Token. It also has Coven, so it's a human, and you get a human token. So again, this is pretty powerful in uh, the white-green scenario. It has, coven, uh, uh, it has a Coven ability. You pay five and a green. Target creature you control gets plus three, plus three, and gains trample until end of turn. Activate it only if you have a coven. The next card in green is Dawnheart Rejuvenator, another card that was revealed last week. Um, Dawnheart Rejuvenator costs three and a green. It's a 2-4 human warlock. When Dawnheart Rejuvenator enters the battlefield, gain three life. And you can tap it to add one mana of any color. So it's a mana dork that gives you three life on entry. Pretty, pretty powerful card. Um, the next card in green is Defend the Celestis. Two in a green green for an instant. Distribute three 1-1 one, one counters amongst one, two, or three target creatures you control. So this is really good if you've got a bunch of cards on your battlefield that have coven abilities, but you don't have a coven yet because there's, there isn't three different powers amongst them. So you can distribute three 1-1 one, one counters amongst creatures you control, and you can trigger all your coven abilities um, with this, or you can just put everything onto one creature and make it th plus three, plus three. The next green card is Dryad's Revival for two and a green. It's a sorcery. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty powerful, just in and of itself. Uh, it also has a flashback, so you can cast this card from your graveyard for four and a green, and then bring another card um, from your graveyard to your hand. And it's target card, so you can grab anything. Um, if you're playing a consuming blob deck, you can... Um, cast this Dryad's Revival to bring up um, consuming Blob, and if Consuming Blob dies again, you can pay its flat, pay its flashback cost to return it to your hand once more. The next green card is Duel for Dominance. One in a green, it's an instant, and it has co it's a coven instant. Choose target creature you control and target creature you don't control. If you control three or more creatures with different powers, put a 1-1 counter on the chosen creature you control, then the chosen creature creatures fight each other. So it's another one of those um, enforced duel cards, but it has a coven ability that lets you buff your creature and fight. 
Uh, the next card is Eccentric Farmer. For two and a green, you get a 2-3 Human Peasant. And she's, like, giving a little... Um... A little old lady that's gifting a pumpkin to a giant creepy centipede thing. Creepy. When Eccentric Farmer enters the battlefield, mill three cards. Then you may return a land card from your graveyard to your hand. Yep. Pretty interesting card. The next card is Harvest Tide Sentry. Harvest. Really went heavy on that H. I apologize to anybody wearing headphones out there. Um, Harvest Tide Sentry is one in a green for a 3-1 human warrior. Lots of humans in green. I think they really want green to work well with white in this scenario. Um... So, we've got a 3-1 human warrior with a coven ability. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, Harvest Tide Sentry can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. One sec. So that's pretty good. Um, if your opponent has a bunch of low-level creatures, then Harvest Tide can't be blocked. Um, which is, it's pretty good. You can sneak some damage in there. Um, the next card is Howl of the Hunt. For two and a green, you get an enchantment aura encha with flash. So you can play this at flash speed. Enchant creature. When Howl of the Hunt enters the battlefield, if enchanted creature is a wolf or werewolf, untap that creature. Enchanted creature gets plus two, plus two, and has vigilance. That's pretty powerful. Uh, Might of the Old Ways is the next card. One and a green for an instant speed card. Target creature gets two, two until end of turn, and it has coven. Then, if you control three or more creatures with different powers, you can draw a card. So you get a plus one, or a plus two, plus two, um, and draw a card for two mana, if you have a coven. Which is pretty, that's pretty awesome. Uh, the next is Path to the Festival, which is probably very similar to Path to the World Tree and other path cards that are in green. <coughs> Pardon me. Um... Path to the Festival is two and a green. Sorcery. Search your library for a basic land card. Then put that card onto the battlefield tapped. Then shuffle. Then, if there are three or more basic land types amongst the lands you control, scry one. And this has a flashback cost of four and a green, so you can cast it again from your graveyard, find another basic land, and possibly scry again. Um... This is obviously a little bit more powerful in a multicolored deck because if there are three or more basic land types amongst the lands you control, scry one. Um, so you get to find a basic land from your library and also scry one if you've got multi lands. Uh, the next card is Pestilent Wolf. For one in a green, you get a 2 2 wolf creature and it has a mana ability. Two in a green. Pestilent Wolf gains Death Touch until end of turn. This is my type of card because it's a cheap 2-2 two, two wolf creature and I can pay 3 to give it Death Touch. And I like Death Touch. Uh, the next card is just a remake of Plummet. It's one and a green. Destroy target creature with flying. And it's just got new art on here. Um, Plummet is a long, long time standard in green. Okay, now we've got the green adversary card. These adversary cards have been very interesting this whole time. So the green adversary is a primal adversary. Two and a green for a 4-3 wolf with trample. When primal adversary enters the battlefield, you may pay one and a green any number of times. When you pay this cost one or more times, put that many 1-1 one -one counters on primal adversary. Then, up to that many target lands you control, become 3-3 three, three wolf creatures and have haste, and are still lands. So 
So, okay, this might be my favorite one so far then. Um, this is very intriguing as far as making a huge um, army of wolves. All of the lands. Um, so we'll do the same math that we've done for all the other ones, except for this is a three mana cost. So if you have 15 mana on the board, let's pretend. Uh, oh, actually, wait. This uh, adversary cost is only two mana. So let's do the same number of times. So if you have 11 mana, you pay three to cast it. So you have eight mana left. Then you pay eight mana to cast the adversary um, enters the battlefield things four times. So then ad primal adversary becomes an eight, seven wolf with trample and four of your lands become three three wolf creatures with haste and are still lands which is pretty pretty great um yeah that's pretty powerful i really really like that did i save that card already i did um that is probably my favorite adversary card so far because I like the idea of immediately getting a little army of wolves. That's a game ender right there. The next green card is Return to Nature for one and a green. It's an instant. You choose one. You can destroy target artifact, destroy target enchantment, or exile target card from graveyard. This is a, a very common type of card in green decks and this one's going to get a ton of use because this is two mana to destroy an artifact or an enchantment or exile something from a graveyard pretty standard uh the next card is rise of the ants oh no insects um it's a four and a green green for a sorcery um, the sorcery reads, create two 3-3 three, three green insect creature tokens, gain two life. And you can p play this again from your graveyard for six and two green. So, all in all, paying uh, for this sorcery and then its flashback spell, um, you can create four 3-3 three, three green insect creature tokens. The next card in green is Sarith the Viper's Fang, which we went over um, last week and is one of my most intriguing and favorite cards of this whole set so far. Um, so much so it already exists in my file folder, so I can't save it again. Um, Sarith the Viper's Fang is two a green green for a 3-4 human warlock legendary creature. Um, tapped creatures you control have death touch. And untapped creatures you control have Hexproof. And then you can pay one and tap Sarith to untap target creature or land you control. I'm not going to go over uh, how epic this card is again because we went over it in detail last week. But basically, anything you're attacking with can have Death Touch. And anything you're not attacking with will have Hexproof um, and can't be the target of spells. Uh, the next green card is Shadow Beast Sighting. Three and a green. It's a sorcery. Uh, create a 4 4 green beast creature token. So you get a 4 4 green beast, and then you can pay six and a green to cast it again from your graveyard. The next. Green card is Snarling Wolf, another card we went over last week. For one green, you get a 1-1 one, one wolf creature token. Not token, creature card. You can pay one and a green to give Snarling Wolf 2-2 two, two until end of turn. Activate only once per turn. Uh, there's a lot of green creatures that have this kind of ability on them. Um, and so this is pretty standard. It's a wolf creature because it's Innistrad and there's a lot of wolf buffs, so this is a pretty standard green card. I like that it's added here. I like that they've kept with that. Uh, let's move on. The next card is Storm the Festival. 
For three, a green, green, green. It's a sorcery. Look at the top five cards of your library. You may put up to two permanent cards with mana value five or less from among them onto the battlefield. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in, any ran in a random order. So you can put two cards of five mana or less straight onto the battlefield. <coughs> and then you can cast this again for flashback for ten mana. Seven and three green. That's... This is a pretty bonkers sorcery. Um, out the gate, it costs six mana, so three and three green. And then for flashback, it costs seven and three green. And basically, you get to put four total, five mana or less, inst or permanents onto the battlefield from the top of your library. It's pretty great. Uh, the next card is Tapping at the Window. Going with the horror creepy theme here. Tapping at the window is one and a green for a sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it onto the put it into your hand. Put the rest into your graveyard. You can cast this again from your graveyard for two and a green. So look at the top three cards, put one creature card from among them into your hand, and reveal it. Pretty standard. Uh, I like it. I like that they made it all spooky. The next card is Timberland Guide, which I believe we went through last week as well. It's one and a green for a 1-1 human scout. When Timberland Guide enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. So this is um, continuing the guide um, history with green decks. There was... Um, there was a guide in the last set, there was a guide in the set previous, and this is just another guide. Uh, when Timberling guide enters the battlefield, put a 1-1 counter on target creature. Again, this is standard, I like it. The next green card is Turn the Earth. Um, it's one green for an instant. Choose up to three target creature. Choose up to three target cards in graveyards. Not just your graveyards, all graveyards. The owner of those cards shuffles them into their libraries. You gain two life. And you can play this again from your graveyard for one and a green. So basically, you're putting three cards from graveyards into their owner's libraries, um, and then they're reshuffling. So if you've got stuff in your graveyard that you really want to get back into the game, um, you can reshuffle them back into your library and hopefully draw them again. The next card is something that's been talked about online for quite a bit. Uh, unnatural growth. Now, I've never... Okay, I won't say never, but you rarely see this many single mana costs of one color. The Unnatural Growth costs one and four green. And it's an enchantment. At the beginning of each combat, double the power and toughness of each creature you control until the end of turn. So every time you go to combat, um, everything you are... Everything you control doubles in power and toughness. Every single time. It's a very expensive card to cast, and it's an enchantment, so it can be a target of enchantment removals. Um, it's pretty crazy, which is why it has a crazy weird casting cost. The next card in green is Willow Geist. It's one green for a 1-1 one, one tree folk spirit with trample. Uh, whenever one or more cards leaves your graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Willow Geist. When Willow Geist dies, you gain life equal to its power. So it doesn't say when one or more cards leaves your graveyard and goes into exile. So anytime you recast a creature from your graveyard or pull a card from your graveyard, you get to put a 1-1 one, one counter on Willowgeist. So if you're looking at cards like Turn the Earth or um, 
What else was there? There's a couple of cards that lets you grab stuff from your graveyard. Mm. Of course, now I can't find them. Dryad's Revival. Another good combo with this one. Um, so every time you use Dryad's Revival, you return target card from your graveyard to your hand. If that target is a creature card, um, whenever one... Oh, it doesn't have to be a creature. Whenever one or more cards leaves your graveyard, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Willowgeist. So this will get more powerful the more times you use cards that pull from your graveyard. Um, and then there's Ren and Seven, which is a legendary planeswalker that we've gone over. We'll go over it really quickly here. Uh, Ren and Seven is three and a green green for a five loyalty planeswalker. It's plus one is reveal the top four cards of your library and put all land cards revealed this way onto, into your hand and the rest into your graveyard. For zero loyalty, you can put any number of land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. And then for minus three loyalty, you can create a green tree folk creature token with reach. And this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Then you can do minus eight loyalty. Return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. You get an emblem that says you have no maximum hand size. So if you're running a tree folk uh, deck, or a Heavy Lands enchantment deck, this is the absolute perfect card for you because Ren and Seven is very powerful. You can spend many turns putting cards into your graveyard, and then once you get eight loyalty, you can do minus eight loyalty to return all permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand, and you have no maximum hand size, so you don't have to discard any of them. And that's it for green. We're going to take a quick bathroom break, refill our coffee, uh, grab some more water, um, go to the washroom, and we will jump 